And those who may have viewed the program that was aired yesterday now uh, with Paul Slackus, we're now airing an addendum to that on this Wednesday. And it's good to be back with my dear friend Paul Slackus after my ranting and so forth from, that was aired yesterday, trying to set a large pattern. So good to have you. Welcome you, Paul Slackus. He's the director. He's the one, the founding force behind what is now being billed as of the first of the year 2011, a Good News Planet. It's been called Good News Broadcast. I think it's a really wise mood to give the change because it, Good News Broadcast can be confused and so forth. But anyway, Paul, th welcome. Very, very Thank much you, for Harold. the conversation. Thank you, Harold. Pleasure, honor to be here always. So continuing the conversation about communications that got sidetracked into larger comprehensive things. And let's talk about communications and share. We, we started, but I didn't get a chance because I went off on a rant. Sorry about that. But anyway, you've been involved in the communications world, uh, CBS and so forth. You were involved in a lot of the major shows. And talk a little, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. And then we want to talk some about Good News Planet and then also your activities, and then we want to get into considering multimedia communications in terms of the knowledge base of the world to the people of the world. Yeah. Okay, so, mm -hmm. uh, well, I've been doing, uh, thank you, Harold. No uh, problem. For uh, uh, 38 years, I've been working in the communications industry professionally, mm -hmm. uh, starting with uh, CBS out of uh, graduate school mm -hmm. um, in uh, in an operations uh, uh, position, and then I went to uh, California, mm -hmm. uh, and I became assistant manager of Television City, uh, CBS Studios, which was one of the heydays of what CBS. What year would that have been, Paul? That was Rock. in 72. Uh, That's early. That's really early. <laughs> I'm old. No, no, you're not old. I'm old. You're, you're getting there, but you're not old. But, so. but what I'm saying, that's relatively early, yeah. Well, you know, it was a great heyday. Uh, you know, we had in Television City, which is still here next to the farmer's market, uh -huh. uh, it's four gigantic studios uh -huh. and a one busy, busy bee place. So we had the uh, all in the family had old Norman Lear shows. Uh -huh. We had uh, there was you a great were producing place. them there. No, 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 no. Yeah. I was assistant manager of the studios. Okay, uh -huh. uh, the stagehands, lighting directors, putting the sets up, taking the sets down. But the sets are where the, the, the bits were shot. The where we the were actual shot. studios. Yeah, you were shooting the studio. Well, though. I didn't shoot. I managed the uh, stagehands yeah, and but, the lighting directors. The, and the, what the, you the, managed and put together was a set that they did the uh, to program show it. On. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, you were involved in that's where Price it is happened. Right. That's where it happened. Carol right? Burnett. Carol Burnett also. Uh, we did so many shows. I was just saying to uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino because they just uh, fried him, him at the Friars Club. I just interviewed him. Oh, good for and, you. Uh, Huge uh, for uh, uh, That uh, we did the first Welcome Back Potter, uh, Cotter. Uh -huh. a, a show for ABC in that studio with wow. uh, John Travolta. And it's still going, the studio? Ta you, Television City is still one Union busy, Square, busy. No, 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 yeah, in Los Angeles. Oh, in L.A. Farmer's I'm sorry. Market. I That's had, okay. show business, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, a la uh -huh. Grande. Right. You know, right, I learned right. how he started in New York, uh -huh. and I was working with the set decorators and the uh -huh. designers here okay. in New York. Right. And then my wife and I went cross country, right. and uh, I got a job over there. So I was there for a couple, two years. Uh -huh. I didn't stay forever because we wanted to come back and raise a family. Right. So then I came back. I was worked at CBS uh, uh, again. What capacity? In, uh, uh, production management. Okay. Uh, so I came back to, to do the Captain Kangaroo show. Oh yeah. And then I uh, worked my way up and uh, became an associate producer of uh, Soap Opera Love of Life. Oh wow, that was and huge. That went on forever. That was it? one of the first. Search yeah. for Tomorrow and, and I learned those tremendous amount. That was a beautiful. The soap opera. Oh, you doing management stuff? You were production talking? manager. Now, well, on, that, on, on that show, I was associate producer. Now what would you be doing? What What is your your part your of the associate producer's job? Uh, it was to uh, work with some of the talent, mm -hmm. to work with some of the writers, to right. work with the uh, the crews. Right. Uh, are the production manager who oversaw the stagehands and the lighting directors. Uh -huh. So we would bring on. Uh, I would be involved with uh, looking at a show when it was being the soap was being shot uh -huh. and suggest. Uh, to do it this way or that way when uh -huh. the producer wasn't there. Uh -huh. So in this case, as a uh, CBS uh, executive, mm -hmm. I was in the sort of management of the success of, of the soap opera. Uh -huh. So uh, Christopher Reeve was on that soap opera. Really? And, yeah. uh, shame what happened. Dana DeLay was. We just did uh, a beautiful thing with Tribute. my new thing, the, uh, the Good News Planet yeah. uh, dot com, which has been around for 12 years, actually. Uh, but uh, the Dana and uh, Chris Reeve Foundation. Okay. 
Okay, good. Uh, for uh -huh. the good things they're doing. That's uh -huh. on. Uh, will be on Good News uh, shortly. Good. Uh -huh. um, but uh, after there, I went to Channel 13. Okay. And I uh, helped start the Nature series, which is still on. Wonderful series. And it's a great Wonderful. series. Yeah. And uh, and you helped in what way? You didn't go out and shoot pictures. No, of beavers because or actually that's a B was a, initially a BBC uh, shot. It was series. Okay. okay. And our job was to do the openings and the closings of uh -huh. that show initially. Okay. Yeah, right. And so we went on location. Uh, Donald Johansson was the first person that did yeah. it. He did uh, uh -huh. found Lucy, mm -hmm. and then George Page uh, took over after that. Uh -huh. And we did that one in uh, Yosemite. How much? Of, how long were you with that? Nature? I was there with Nature, uh, maybe. Uh, a year or so, okay. uh, not uh -huh. a long time, because I was in production manager, so you got to work on different shows. Then I did some music shows. We opened up the uh, Marriott Hotel here with a... The Marquis? Uh, yeah, yeah, with the first show there, a salute to Benny Goodman, wow, Frank yeah, Sinatra okay. over there, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and production that was, management. Was it live or taped? Or? That was just I believe live. that was taped. Yeah. It might have been We're, live. No, it was taped. We taped yeah. it. And you're and putting it all together. No, I'm a production manager. That's production a, that's manager. a position what are that's... You? Place for the cameras and the crew and stuff. Or? Uh, the the higher, making sure we had enough crews, stagehands, okay. camera right. crews, working with the producers at right. that time. I see. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Over there, okay. and then uh, then I got involved with the biggest series at, at that time that Channel 13 had, which was the Brain series. Oh, I and remember that. Was that. Two it hours, was very uh, good. twelve. Sorry, ten hours of the science of the brain. Uh huh. And that was a big project. I worked. It was. I worked on for two years. Uh -huh. And then I became the business manager of Channel 13. Was that Brain Series part of a series that it was part of? No, it was of? called. It was, no, it was ten, series, ten and that was it. No, but it was just a one series. One ten, series ten of one ten hour, hour show. Ten one hour shows. About the brain. And that was taking into account a lot of the neurotransmitter stuff that was being discovered and everything. It was a lot of brilliance, yeah. no doubt about and it. it. Was, you had brilliant scholars that were adding the intellectual integrity to it. And they did a show on each kind of thing. The, the, fir uh, the first show, the show began, and this uh -huh. is uh, the applies to all of us because uh, we all have those brain things. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the first one we started off with Greg Luganis, the uh, the diver, the swimmer, uh -huh. diver, uh, walking up the uh, stairs to do a dive. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was an Olympic uh, Olympian. Yeah. And uh, we just put the camera on his feet. The, the, the feet go nowhere without the brain. <laughs> yeah. We're all connected. The whole yeah, body's that's connected. Right. It so it was that system. mindset. It's one system, yeah. One system. Mm -hmm. Michael Tilson Thomas, I remember we did something with him, he, a pianist with the San Francisco uh, uh, Orchestra over there, how he would he could play the music without the piano. Yeah. You know, it's all, it, all in the mind. So when I left, uh, I became business manager of 13, and then I got involved Business with manager of that series? No, no. I, I became the business manager of what they called the Metropolitan Division at that time. Well, that would be the overall programming with Channel 13? No, then no. I was like in the management of, the, of a division within Channel 13. Okay, uh-huh, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, and then I uh, was, you know, worked there and I helped with something called general support announcements, which was allowed uh, the, the car to move a little, you know, mm -hmm. and how they, you know, because they were always raising money for... Uh, to maintain the great program. When you say the car to move, you maybe channel as a, 13. As a you commercial, mean, like, you know, for a car, uh, it was commercials on public television. Yeah, they crept in. They so they crept on. They, they, weren't they financed by a corporation for public broadcasting or something, or trying to be done so they didn't have to go to advertising? They've gone to it now and fundraising. Uh huh. Well, no, I think they always had fun, you know, foundations and, and private yeah, yeah. donors. And, but they got things uh, that look awful like ads now. I guess they're probably moving the car more than moving in the past. Moving the car, that's what you mean. That's well, at first, term we I couldn't move. Heard. First, you couldn't, when I started, oh, you, you couldn't to move to the, the car. Still shot. Still car, yeah. and then after uh, ours uh, opportunity, you know, uh, they could move the car maybe ten feet. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see. That's an interesting term. I've never heard that. Yeah, I but guess what it's, it's talking about is bringing ads in, it's bringing commercialization it. right. yeah. to to, bringing it, commercial. to a degree, you know, uh, and uh, and it maintained. And then I went to uh, Channel Thirty One for a short time. Which yeah, was that was good. They were downtown, down in the city square. The first city. municipal building. Yeah, we almost put a program on there way back when, oh, yeah? independently, ethnic. You did a lot of ethnic programs. Well, at then. Channel 30. Oh, wait a minute. We almost did it because we had a friend of mine who was a uh, producer. He was Pakistani. We were going to do the uh, Pakistan-American hour, mm -hmm. and it was going to reach the whole market. It was going to be in Urdu and everything. Oh, yes. And we went through that thing. It was a dear friend of mine, and they're interested in Kashmir, but they're interested in... And, 
He went and he had a heart attack and he was pronounced dead. Oy. It was all set to go with 31. It was the thing where you could reach the whole market. Then he had to recover from that. Then we went through it all and then he finally recovered and then we were, uh, 31 went out of business, I think, as far as I could tell. They had it all set to do it. Then we went and they were going to do a program uh, on direct TV and they were negotiating with that and he was a friend of uh, Nawi Sharif who was the pr prime minister. A lot of really good contacts to get everything going or do whatever. And then uh, they made a coup d'etat and he was his man who was the head of the country, they made him the minister of overseas Pakistanis then, you know, when he was, his man was in, his boyhood friend was in power and then he got thrown over in a, in a, uh, in a coup so we couldn't do it. Never got uh -huh. it on the air. But the 31 was an independent station where you could reach well, the market. Yeah, well, actually, and it's gone now. I don't think there's no, anything no, no. like well, it. So what happened with Channel 31? First of all, it's the first PBS station. I don't uh -huh. know if you know that. Was that? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, first really? PBS station. And uh, uh, so the way they supplemented the running of the station uh, was that they uh, rented or leased out some of the for the some of the airtime yes. to uh -huh. foreign broadcasters, right. which interest, interested me yeah. because I wanted to make worldwide TV shows. That's right, and you did and a lot so, of ethnic stuff. And yeah. so I, uh, well, from there I was there just a short time, and I decided I'd go out on my own. That's when you and, broke from the and yeah. Oh, you went into the fourteen the corporate manure, years. I went out. Manure. Well, then Chinese actually yeah. uh, twenty five years later now yeah, the right. Chinese asked me to help them sell their Chinese television in the World Journal newspaper. Wow. And so the whole Asian, uh, I, so I started, uh, I you mean created. You national Chinese television programming in the United States? Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. They you, had a, did you know Yusai Khan? Well, Yusai's on our board. I she is on the yes. board. She's yeah. huge. Yes. I mean, in terms of China, she became a star there. Yes. You know, in terms of everybody One in world. China knows her. One, One world. world. She was very good. She came right. out of public access. And so, Correct. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. so uh, um, I started a uh, multicultural advertising and marketing company. Right. I became uh, uh, knowledgeable about how to market to the Asian community here, mm -hmm. mainly in America. Mm -hmm. uh, I made arrangements with the Chinese, then I went to the Koreans, and then the Japanese. I had offices in every ethnic, and then I went to my my, my own ancestry is Hungarian, yeah. and uh, I'm a product of ethnic marketing. You want to reach my mother. Mm -hmm. I always say you put an ad in the uh, either the Hungarian newspaper, you put it in the Jewish Week. Hungarian's a really unique language, Mayar. Uh huh. No it's guess, very yeah. unique. It's not. It's not. Indo it's not. You know. It's. It's like Finnish. Correct. Yeah. It's very interesting. Hungary. Uh, Thomas Zaz. A lot of interesting people come out of Hungary. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm very. I, I. My ears pick up when somebody's Hungarian. Uh -huh. Are you Jewish then also? Yeah, I'm Hungarian Jewish. Hungarian Jewish. Boy, there's a lot of good stuffs come out of that community uh -huh. in terms of benefiting the world. Uh huh. Good. Including Paul Slack, as I was suggesting. <laughs> I didn't realize, Good. yeah. I'm Jewish, but I'm also an interfaith minister. Yeah, okay. Right. And believer. Yeah. Anyway, you got involved things. in that, in so, doing that. That's uh, very apropos for a city like New York. Paul, I heard there's 195 countries at the UN, and we've got sizable communities of 189 of them in the New York metropolitan yeah, region. Yeah, I believe that. You picked well. I would be for surprised a, if the, I mean, I'm actually surprised that the other six, I think. Yeah, said, what happened to them? <laughs> what they'll, happened to them? They'll be on by next I, week. I yeah. think if we name those c communities, it's wonderful we would that probably get uh, 10,000 letters saying I, I am from whatever that country was. And in general, with the expansion of all kinds of communication, remember you go back to the old days and you had to have a port -a pack and stuff. I don't know if you go back that far. <laughs> Yeah. But they, when first you could make television. I mean, they had these big Ampex things. You couldn't do it. Big and so I go back to about the fifth port pack that came off the boat from Japan, which made it possible for an individual to make television. Right. And Peter Goldmark Sr. invented videotape. It was all kinescope before, back in the 50s and 60s. And everything. But anyway, it's really good that there's all this wider variety of venues and production capability for greater numbers of groups and people and individuals uh, through time. And I think it's wonderful that everybody have a way in which they can make their voices be heard. And the I like that democracy. Yeah, idea. it's wonderful. Mm. I actually was lucky guy since you brought up his name, Peter Goldmark, who mm. also invented the, the record. Oh, yeah, the record. Yeah, you knew him. Bonnie? I did. Because Bonnie, his, his, his secretary was Bonnie. Be, I know Peter because when I was in Fairfield, when I was in graduate school, I did yeah. a project with him. No kidding. And uh, studying, it was called a uh, um, quality of life study. It was one of the first cable television studies. We went back into the woods, actually, in uh, Storrs, Connecticut, and studied whether people wanted more communications. Uh -huh. All right? right. It yeah. was a very interesting study.
Yeah, Predominantly, yeah. most people didn't. They said, why do you think we live in the woods up in Storrs, Connecticut? Yeah, right. We don't particularly want that. <laughs> we don't want to be we bothered. Got, we have the okay. squirrels. You know, yeah, we're right. the, yeah. predominantly, but then eventually, you know, cable and When whatever. you did that brain series, where did it stand in terms of Cosmos that, uh, that uh, you know, Carl uh, Sagan, Sagan, Carl Sagan did it was this. After. So electrified the nation. Well, he did. You was, did yours after he did that? No, I believe ours was or, before or his. Content. I think so. A little before, so. yeah. And, uh, and Carl Sagan was out of KCET. They yeah. did that one there. Uh -huh. and and uh, so I, I believe his was later. I could be he, wrong. Yeah. It would be interesting because what that you're doing there now is you're doing programming that is really educationally interesting in terms of, you know, science and the developments of what's going on. Charlie Rose does great things now where he's done a series in depth about the brain. Yes. You've seen some of those things he mm -hmm. did? And he's got the people crazy go about Charlie. And, yeah, I'm going to yeah, interview he's Charlie. Really good. He said, okay. Okay, good. That's great. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm crazy really, about him. You're going to do it for good, good news? For my good news planet. Good. Yes. He's really good. He's really on very the money. He's man. Very, very smart and very much in touch with the system and everything like that. But he does that. But uh, that, that's getting around to where you're doing things like what was, the, what was the major report for cable? I forget what it was. It was at a something commission. I can't remember now, so it's not going to be good to bring it. It had to do around 1970, the commission. I, I can't remember the name, but it was a major report about uh, cable television, and it was, came out about 1970. And uh, it, it, it talked about cable television and also public access. So we're in public access here, which was something new, and it was all coming out of that fateful year, uh, 1970. There were so many things that you can you can take back to 1970. That's why, like in the program we did yesterday, where I'm ranting and so forth. Number one, I will say, number in the fullness of time, it's not going to happen right away. But in the fullness of time, when they realize what's going on in terms of the zeitgeist and everything in large measure, like it took a long time to catch up with the Enlightenment coming out of uh, Scotland and everything. But that was the Scottish Enlightenment informed the world and the United States, Declaration of so it takes time. Or they only let Galileo off the hook about 12 years ago for saying we were not the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. Because people have their identity wrapped up in their thinking about things that they've lived with over a long time. Anyway, 1970, but that's when it was. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but public access. So that was, the, that was the development in a serious way of cable, which was coming out as a new addendum to the over-the-air broadcast. And things were evolving and moving. Uh, I don't know if the integrated circuit was developed around then, too. It was going to lead to the computer huh. and the internet and everything. But all of these things are going and uh, are coming and the cable television was touted as something that was a medium of abundance mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of interesting rather than the spectrum limitations over there broadcasting. All of this is uh -huh. part of a development. I guess it began back with the telephone uh -huh. and then the radio and then the film and so forth. Uh -huh. And it's all communications and you've been interested in all of that. I, I've enjoyed it all, all these years. Harold, yeah. let me, before, you know, so I, then I did an ethnic marketing company yeah. for a long time. Right. So it's large companies. I did all kinds of crazy yeah. things to get uh, the U.S. Postal Service Lunar New Year stamp thing uh, uh, sold or the, the uh, uh, Sprint phone line sold yeah. or IBM or Western Union. We had a lot of clients. And then 12 years ago, I started Good News Broadcast. But before I did that, I want to ask, you a, I wanna yeah. ask you a question. Yeah, anything Harold, at all. I don't Because care. I'm interested in, you know, you've been on the air how long? Well, I've been on the air, I think it would be fair to say, it's about, uh, I got started about, it must have been about 1970, so it would be okay. 40 years. Okay, uh, on and, public uh, access. there was no public access in New York then. There was, I was in the town of New Paltz, upstate. Oh, sorry. And I was in touch with Paul Ryan and Raindance and the people, intellectuals who were concerned with the implications of media. And he was in turn, he was, um, when McLuhan was at Fordham with John Calkin, uh, and he that. was assistant to McLuhan, as John, and he was brilliant, Paul, Paul, um, Paul uh, um, uh, right. Ryan and and the the rain dance people will know but he and so he got the use of, he got uh, uh, I think the president got the first and then I don't know Nam Jun Pai got the second or the, what they called a porta pack and it was a device about like this kind of big but the reel to reel and the camera you connect black and white you could make 20 minutes of television. And that's what made it possible for an individual to make television. And I got the use of that. It must have been about 1970. And so I right away started going to Washington doing senators and whatnot. Interviewing them. Yeah. And set up a program. And we had a little, 
head end on the top of the mountain served a 2,000 community college town there where I was in Scott or lived. And so we put a camera on and we put the camera up in the head end. It was cold, there was no heat or anything, but it housed the equipment. About uh, one fifth, you know, this little corner and everything, and so we started putting on program. We had people coming up from New York City, uh, Jonas, Jonas Mikas and, and filmmakers and Allen Ginsberg and uh, Abby Hoffman and this kind of stuff. They'd come up to the mountain and we'd put on program before they had it in New York, and it was all able to be done by just putting a camera connection to the equipment and it didn't involve any money. It was all done out of the spontaneous but community. What interested you personally? I mean, you were a little, from a little boy to this moment. What was it about sharing other people's thoughts and having a conversation with somebody? Well, there's nothing to more. Than, no, nothing more than just being intellectually curious. That's all. Okay. And then trying to take inspiration about how, you know, what's going on. It was a, it was a, a intellectually curiosity, and we had the Encyclopedia Britannica and the Harvard Classics in the home, and a lot of talk about things intellectual. My father used to say, you will be a gentleman, you know, that kind of thing. And just interested, and autodidactic, and just interested all the time in things and learning, that's all. But you so continued on with this for, for since 1970. Well, I took a minute, I no, I did it, yeah. I've been doing it now for, since about 1970. And since I do have a feeling for the year 1970 uh, because of other things that were going on. And I think that's when we, uh, I'll just say it real quick, we transcended material scarcity at the level of capability in 1970. Fuller had that pegged and there were some others also and that period was also the period of Malcolm X and Martin King, the assassinations, John Kennedy, Woodstock, Vietnam, all of this thing was going on at that time but those things like the spirit of Woodstock or the spirit of 1960, they, they say the spirit of Woodstock and they just in the, in the establishment people, they say Nixon and that kind of thing and people who were concerned with the conserving of things institutional because that was a period of seeming anarchy, sex, drugs and rock and roll, there's just a big party of irresponsible licentiousness. I don't agree with that at all. I think it was being picked up by artistic people that there was something major going on, blowing in the wind, Bobby Dill. And the intellect, I mean the intellectual community, the youth, picked up on that, and that was signaling a major moment, and I think we'll get back to that in terms of defining the broader story, the evolution of universal consciousness, including humanity. That was going, they will understand what was going on beyond the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and the anti-war stuff. Abby Hoffman was great, and got involved with trying to improve the human condition, and particularly with, I was a professor, and I'm anti-authoritarian, I used to give everybody an A on the first day to get rid of any authority. And then they would just get the smart, they'd go away because they'd go to Harvard if they want to after they get their grade and that outer directed. And my class would get filled with the smartest people on the campus or in the area just for the hell of it, out of just what we're going to do without uh, authority. So I don't like authoritarianism, seriously, well, don't like it. And I would. Well, I had a degree in all that, did a dissertation and everything in Bolivia, two years in Bolivia with the Aymara people in Bolivia. And I, I don't know what I taught, I was just interested in everything. I think there should be a university, in the university there should be a department of everything. Because everything is interconnected and they divide and conquer the intellectual community by specializing and by encouraging specialization as scholarship. And so they get the best minds and there's nobody worried in the system that's running things, worried about dullards or just go, go along people. But they're worried about smart people and they get them um, divide and conquer. They get the intellectuals divided and conquered into specializations, which means they'll never think about the whole and become a threat to those who tend to think about the whole. So it sounds to me so it's a revolution. Like yesterday we were talking about the whole, you know, and then I had my little, little yeah. Good News Planet. Well, okay? I got nothing again. And, and this is and this is the whole. So, oh, in '69 so, we went so, on the moon. Don't forget. Right, right. Yeah. So, so do you think that the you know the uh, fractionizing of the planet into countries and and the uh, com sort of semi-competitive or are not even semi-competitiveness between countries and something is something maybe we are taught as young people that. Uh, you know, uh, because you gave the person an A day one, okay? Well, I so did you that took to, away, took I did away that the. To, uh, you understand? I did that to get rid of any authority. Uh, authority because, and now, the opportunity to well, study on like, your own merit of no, desire. No, yeah, that, that's right. Do you understand what that is? Yeah. If somebody is like a cop 
or somebody is a school teacher, or somebody is a boss, or somebody's a senior vice president, they've got a hammer, a requirement, authority that they have to answer to. A drill sergeant. Did you have to, have to serve in the United States Army? No, I, I didn't. I was drafted, and I was a terrible soldier because I would say to the drill sergeant, I'm with the buck private, young, and I would say to the, the, the sergeant, they'd be saying, now do this. And I'd say, we could do things more democratically. <laughs> and they didn't want to hear it, yeah. you see. It, that model is a model for the society. It's a military model, top down, do what you're told, don't think, do what you're told, think in this little constricted way, and they divide the intellectuals up into specializations that make them entirely innocuous to being able to understand the whole system and become a threat to the people who think that way. So the course on everything. That's what it would be. Is it would good be news. just. I like that. I think no, it's a division. Good idea. Uh, they shouldn't have all the divisions. Everybody becomes a specialist, well, I, I, uh, and that's what I they, like particularly that. with the no computer, divisions. with the linear regression, where you could go in great detail. You can go in great detail to your area of specialization, and you can bore the bejesus out of a young person who's sitting there listening to you as an authority on the great detail of all the things you know about your area of specialization. And, and what it, they're looking for, the youth, youth, youth is looking for patterns between specialists. No, patterns, also. patterns, yeah. not details. But they can sit there and they call it scholarship. If you listen to the guy oh, e ego tripping about how much he knows about the Battle of Gallipoli. He knows it all down. He can spend a whole term talking about the mountain was here and this was there. And, they can, and that's what they call education. And it's to divide. The main thought of that is to get people to be answerable to an authority figure in order to get a certificate that's going to give them a chance to make some money. That's all education has become. So you think there uh, would be more helpful for them to understand that the Gallipoli is somewhere on planet Earth and planet no, Earth I, is somewhere think, well, uh, in, in the universe? Without going into me or anything, I was just interested. And I also said the university should set itself up that way and the university should become, because I could see, and it was obvious and it's now becoming overwhelmingly obvious on a planetary scale, that where we've been all tied up within the world of print, and within the world of linear perception, even onto ideas of what rationality is out of the James Joy, I mean, uh, Mayor Marshall McLuhan said it was the phonetic alphabet was the made organizing metaphor for Western civilization, which has colonized the world for the last 500 years since Columbus and so forth, and it's out of date, and it's now becoming nonlinear, and now we're becoming multisensorial. That is an extension of the eye, and that's an extension of linear. So you real, you put everything. James Michener wrote in, in Hawaii. He started the book Hawaii, and it took eight pages of beautiful literature to describe a headland in my in 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 my Hawaii. And he said the sky was blue, and the bird was flying, and the wind caressing, and the palms waving, and the sun. And it took eight pages to describe. What if you were standing on that headline, you would experience all at once, and you would do it multisensorially. But we couldn't convey multisensorial perception. We had a little painting and things we could do on, on that, but we haven't been able to do it to extend our consciousness the way we have when we walk through the world. We don't expend, we don't, ex, we don't encounter things uh, linearly. It's all at once, multi-sensor. And that's where the youth is getting because the, the extension of it when we get into television and now we're getting into the internet and now we're getting into streaming and this, we're getting now to a multi-sensorial perception and that's where the youth is. The youth is that multi-sensorial, they don't read books anymore. They don't read big long tomes that a specialist would tell them to do to get a degree. So I think they ought to just let them be free and then present really important, important summations with the best minds of really important scientific things like your brain series you did or the thing that Charlie Rose is doing with the brain or mostly like uh, Carl Sagan did with the cosmos. That was magnificent education and you could do that. You could present that. You could do it without one letter of alphabet, one written word at all. You could do it all multisensorial. And all you would need to do is follow Sergey Brin and, uh, and the other guy, Page, when they said a couple, three years ago, the main thing they're working is to take Kurzweil's thing and create a thing where you can talk into it and it's automatically voice recognition, 
translated into another languages of the world so you can translate. And then all you need to do to have people to have access to things is to be able to talk and everybody can talk. So you don't have to take them through a long process of so-called education in order for them, you can say, okay, you, you, do you understand? You can bypass that. Yeah, I understand. And they should. So multisensorial or television or multisensorial presentation of information. I mean, really good productions that is well researched and well knowledge and everything should be the business of the scholars. And they shouldn't have to try and bore the students in the name of scholarship with all their detailed detail that they go into. So okay. they should get rid of grading. Then the students would go where they want to go. And then you could have presentations. They could have a center where they could go where there's interesting things. And why anybody would want to go to a university when the internet is emerging, everything's going to be on the internet. They've even got a thing where they're going to be streaming to the cell phone universe with multimedia uh, now, yeah, with time. the iPhone, Android, and so forth. And phone, that's the future. Cell phone's number one. Yeah, it is. They got a new one, if I could. They got a new app. It's called, you know what the name of it is? It's called The Channer. Honest to God. Oh, yeah, yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, The yeah. Channer. I want everyone to know about that because I want everybody to be saying, Hey, man, did you grok this flick I sent your way? Yeah, man, I watched it on the channer. I think that would be good. How they came with that name, I don't know. Uh -huh. But those are things that have application to education. And also, it should be people are looking for patterns between areas of specialization rather than details. That's my perception of why there's a great big change and people are dropping out of school rightfully. Uh -huh. Why they would want to go and be submitted to that authoritarian structure, I don't know. It's a babysitting service so the people can go out and work at jobs that they shouldn't have to work at in order to have money, which means we have to change the economic system, which there's no, well, there's gonna be forced to it now. They're gonna be forced to it given the context of the current meltdown. They're going to have to liberate people economically, but that gets uh -huh. into a larger loop of the qualitative transformation that's required. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But education and communication of good ideas are a, a way that the youth can partic and the other and other people who are thinking comprehensively and systematically and see patterns between things is the future we need and we don't have it. Okay. So that's educational use right, of right, it. Right. Yeah. And the networks are, and you're, you're going to have to get used to having everything available to you. And that's one of the other transformations I see. You shouldn't get me off, because one thing leads to another. But back to your thing. You did okay. that ethnic programming, yeah, and you um, put good news together. So, well, we merged the uh, ethnic programming, which we started, you know, as I mentioned, this 25th anniversary. Uh, we merged that 12 years ago into what we started <coughs> with is goodnewsbroadcast.com, because I visioned the... Uh, internet being on the television <coughs> one day, yeah, and it that is. day is today. Absolutely, and that's good news it's going, it, because call, it, it's uh, going it, exponential. It, it, it's it exponential. allows everybody to be a producer uh -huh. on equal ground as the networks, as the major media. Right. Everybody can now have a channel on right. on the uh, web. And, a, uh, television a, a television channel. television channel on the web. Do you realize and how so much of a transformation that, that is? That is massive. Yeah, so yeah. everybody can share their, and it's a matter of eyeballs, how many people come to see your show right. and how many people go to somebody else's show. So huh. it's, it's, it's a good thing because... Uh, it's democratizing. It's democratizing because communication is such an important uh, uh, part of a human's uh, <coughs> uh, perspective yeah. of the world uh -huh. uh, because when we watch TV or we read a newspaper, you know, sometimes we don't realize that it's the opinion of the management of that newspaper, of that media. Yeah. And now we're, as we build our own media, if we so desire, we'll maybe understand that now it's our opinion of the way we see the situation. Well, that's So happened, I think it's going to yeah. happen, it's going to help. Yeah, I think so. More you, discerned you, viewers. You have, de you have democratic roots. You'd like it to, you, you had, when you go ethnic, you're going into groups that aren't being represented on the boards of the major corporations that are getting the big contracts for the national feed and everything. Uh -huh. You were going uh -huh. to a group that was not normally heard from and you were doing that. Entrepreneurs will do that, take advantage of things, uh, markets or market development or development of programming from squ quarters that the main lines uh, will not be looking at. They're all uh -huh. looking for stars. 
Uh -huh. They can get the eyeballs to get the ad sales and everything. Yeah. Well, the good news, are, and we're announcing that goodnewsplanet.com or planet.tv yeah. yeah, is, uh, is really general market. Okay. We also have within there good news China, good news Japan, good news, good news countries, okay. which we're building out more uh, um, feverishly. Uh -huh. But also the main is uh, broadcast is general market, Good news, positive content, uh -huh. uh, sharing the good things that the world's doing, the okay. people of the world are doing. That's good. And it's uh, we're as are busy as can be. Okay. We have maybe do 40 shows a week. We can't even get 40 them up fast enough. 40 shows a week. Wow. Well, short form programming. Yeah. Right. And we go to a lot many, of interview talking. A lot of interviews. Yeah, that's people easy. Contact that's me easy like this. And yeah. uh, uh, authors and uh, associations. We have about a thousand corporations on Good News right now. What, what do you mean a uh, thousand? on you mean programming about program, them or their we have 5,000 shows right now you have what 5,000 shows how can you have 5,000 shows I don't short understand. form show so every short time form being what do you mean short in date duration in three minutes or uh, uh, yeah, 10 minutes the average is about a 10 minute show okay and then average we've been doing this for 12 years okay and we've interviewed a lot of people so give me a, a, a sample of what one of those 10 minute pieces might be all right so a sample would be uh, um, ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, for ten minutes, we uh, uh, like on the benefit side of organizations that are doing good. We just did uh, uh, so a woman named Petra Kova, who has a healing heart, who was a famous model, who was in Thailand when the tsunami hit, mm -hmm. and you know she almost lost her life and so on and so forth. So her dream is to build educational facility. So it's a nonprofit organization. Uh -huh. So she has an event. We're invited to the event, to the red carpet, and then mm. Quincy Jones and mm. Uh, mm. Uh, Jennifer Hudson Quincy and, great, and yeah. uh, Russell Simmons and all Russell kinds of Simmons, people yeah. come there and I interview them at, at, at an event. And you get all and that then, into a 10 minute we, clip? So whatever it comes up no, to. No, but ten. I'm just saying, you can get, so, you, so that's say like do, getting a pattern. I, I probably do like 20 minutes on right. that. Uh, that 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes of interviewing. And then how much down to what you hear? I'm sorry? 20 minute airing? Yeah, I, I can air the whole thing okay, on the web. Okay, the 10 minutes is rule of thumb. The 10 minutes normally is what they call satellite feed interviews. Okay, right. That the uh, professional or uh, public relations companies yeah. who are promoting uh, XYZ yeah, Corporation. Yeah, right, and then you could link to them. They yeah. call me and say, let's do an interview about uh, um, uh, you know, a financial company, a bank, yeah. let's do something about financial literacy for yeah. 10 minutes. Uh -huh. And it's brought to you by XYZ Bank. Well, is that like an uh, advertisement, or is that an ad thing, or is that public relations you're doing? I call it public relations you do. Okay, in that yeah. sense. Uh -huh. Our business model is, mm -hmm. though, then to go and build a relationship with that XYZ bank and say, let's build a channel on good news mm -hmm. for your bank about good news, you know, for teaching you know, children how to be Financial more financially literacy, literacy yeah, okay? Yeah. And, you know, brought to you by XYZ Bank. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, it's, have you developed it's all a good. lot of that? Have you developed a lot We've, of interest we by have, those people you've done those things well, with? Well, we're just starting now, okay. after 12 years, mm -hmm. we, after having a thousand of these companies on Good News and uh -huh. nonprofits, we're just going back You with never that did do model. that follow up with them in the past? I haven't really. I've done maybe Why? 20 Why certain, didn't you? Why didn't you think of that? Well, I mean, no, I've always thought of it. I just haven't. I'm, I'm been possessed. Been too busy for one I'm possessed with the Good News, sharing the good news with proving the point yeah. that the world is good uh -huh. and the people uh -huh. of the world are good. Yeah. So, and I'm a production guy and I like to make shows, so that's mm -hmm. actually a bigger turn on to You're me. out in Brooklyn now. You should get back in Manhattan. We, we are will be building a place out in, in Manhattan. That's uh, You are building now? You got to go? We, have, maybe. A, we have a, some somebody maybe. is interested in, uh, in some giving us you some space. used to be on Fifth to Avenue. It was really we were on 5th and 18th yeah, and and for 17 years. Where do you want to locate? Where's the best place to locate in Manhattan In New now? York? I just want a, a place, uh, I mean, eventually when our uh, investors come in to yeah, yeah, the big yeah. picture here, mm -hmm. I mean, my interest is to buy a building that I can... No, where? What part what of Manhattan? Part? What, what part is the Manhattan you want? Yeah. Yes, definitely Manhattan. I'm just Manhattan. curious, Yeah, because yourself, we would keep good news. Where's Brooklyn the best Day. place for you to be located? Uh, you know, we were down in Union Square. Union Square was cool, and I liked down there because at that time I had originally been in Times Square. Actually, my buddy, Marcelino Mieres, used to own Times Square Studios, which mm. is where the Reuters building is. Uh -huh. So actually, in the early 80s, I had 
a brownstone mm -hmm. in that corner, uh, right. which we had Times Square Studios, yeah. where we did a lot of shows. Yeah. Uh -huh. Times Square is an exciting place, yeah, but it is pretty tour. darn crowded. Yeah, it's crowded. <laughs> a lot of people are raising. You know, it's a lot. What, of, how do the, the rents go? Are you familiar? How, how expensive it is to try to operate in the various parts of town? Um, For those entrepreneurs out there who are yes. thinking of setting up something? You know, I, I really haven't looked into it. You haven't it. done it. Okay, uh, fair uh, enough. Uh, Somebody could do uh, that for fully. you. Fully. It'd be uh, easy to do. But, you know, you know I love New York. Mm. New York's a great place to Me run a too. business. Me too. I love New York. We have it's the just wonderful. Everybody's tons here. of good news. Yeah. And uh, because there's tons of great people, right? And uh, we couldn't ask for yeah, a, I love a greater place to be. I think it's possible. I love everybody, really. I think everybody's great. I love everybody. I think they could have a good, uh, you know, you. And I'm not out to get anybody or anything like that. Uh, you know, I, I, I like everybody. We've done a lot of people within the establishment and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I like people too. I think you and I share that. And uh, everybody, I did somebody yesterday that aired today, and I said, we could, we're doing an hour. You could do an, a 24-hour piece on any person you want to, because if you go into all the nuance of what happened when they're in the 13th grade, or the third grade or something, you could go in great detail. And that's true of any subject, too. But now you're going to get it down to where you're going to consolidate some of those things in patterns again. Like if you're getting all the people, you know, if you're getting all the stories, then you'll get a pattern. Do you understand what I'm saying by pattern recognition? We're ve human consciousness is very good at recognizing patterns between subsystems of what is an overall system. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, can, can you yeah. break your system down into the good yeah. news? How can you put a grid on good news? There's so much of it. Well, I, I, I'd like the pattern to be uh, that the world is good. Okay. Period. <laughs> you want that to be the overall pattern? The overall pattern, pattern is that okay. by, by seeing uh -huh. people do good, uh -huh. doing good, Back to do normal. gooders, yeah. the, the, that makes you feel good that people are doing good. Yeah. And, and if you see the results, the important yeah. thing is to see some results of mm -hmm. what people are doing uh -huh. and uh, you know the giving some money to somebody that can't walk or mm -hmm. a wheelchair or, mm -hmm. or cleaning a community or mm -hmm. doing good mm -hmm. and the more we're good begets good mm -hmm. and that's that's what I love okay back to communication and we had television right you can remember I was back to the porta pack and you can remember Peter Goldmark he had a secretary was Bonnie she was really nice <laughs> and he remember. I remember that because we did it at his home and everything Beautiful guy, and he had invented videotape. And what happens is people come and invent things. We didn't have the integrated circuit. We didn't have the... Um, Jack Killian. Uh, was that Killian? Was that Texas Instruments? Yes. Yeah, and they got... So without that, and then we get other things. We get the chip, the, the, uh, the silicon chip. We get the chip. And all these things come that we didn't have, so there are new developments happening. And it's going faster and faster, and the ability to communicate is developing exponentially now. Even though we had a dot-com, uh, you know, uh, uh, runaway thing and everything, then it cr they said crash. But all of that's still here. The internet's still here, and it's going. And the developments within those and those developments are going up. Uh, Intel and everything is going up exponential. We're going to be swimming in bandwidth. We're going to be swimming in capability to communicate. And all of the capabilities are developing, and it's very important. You see, the future of the world is the Internet in a very real case. Or how do you see the Internet relating to all the other systems? Television over the air, broadcasting, cable television, all these other things that are developing. I can't help but see the Internet. It's, it seems everything's going to be Internet. Well, I, you know, I've... Or, you know, I, I, I probably don't know what I don't know is going to be after the Internet, yeah, yeah. As, as they always say in yeah. uh, Gutenberg's press. He didn't yeah. know there was going to be an Internet. He thought the, the press was the, the big deal. Yeah, so, Gutenberg was so, voted the most important man <laughs> of the last 500,000 years oh, is that by right? Time Magazine. Gutenberg so, so the web, with you know, press. with the medias that we know of now, uh, the web can give you the video, it can give you the audio, and it can give you the text. So, you know, the web and, you know, and then the web taking that web content, you can put it into a phone, you could put it onto a television, You're putting it you on can the put it anywhere and everywhere. We couldn't do that you know. 20 no, years ago. No, this is a new deal. We couldn't deal. do it in 1970. I mean, that's one, so, of the, that's one of the things that was causing to be a qualitative transformation dated to 1970. That's when cable was building up. Right. When was the internet, internet, I bet that there were a lot of things happened right in that period. 
Okay, I just make so that it's, point. It's, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. as long as uh, you know. Uh, once again, it's you know, it's in my mind is always brought back down to what is being said, <laughs> what is the programming, what are people, well, that's what, what are people yeah. utilizing the web for? How about that? In for good, okay. they use it for good. I'm okay. happy. Okay, how about that? We talked before, and do you realize I, I gave a critique of professors who have a captive audience. And uh, they and they're going to grade them, and they're going to be relative to their career paths, and that 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 consciousness thing. What about the idea that professors and that the youth want patterns, and they want not specialization? Although specialization, in medical terms, if you're a doctor, or general practitioner, you get very less, very much less money than if you become a specialist on one valve of the heart or some specialization. They want to specialize because they get more money. Everything is motivated by that. Did you think? Maybe I'm wrong in that. Well, you know, everybody but, gets motivated by what they get motivated. I think there's nothing like a general practitioner, personally. Yeah, but uh, they don't get paid. Well, but I don't base life on money. No, no, so. no, no, no. But I'm saying uh, that that's the thing that people, now you're getting down to where they're going to start foreclosing and throw people out on the street again. Uh, money's all going to the super rich. They got that. They're going to have more money. They're not going to know what to do with it and everything, and they don't have a system that the people are still beholden for. So one, one of the great people at WIRE said the whole financial system, the whole economic paradigm. We had this thing in, Jan in September of 2008 when Paulson came in with three pages and said we have to make all these changes or the whole world system is going to fall apart. We're going to have to avoid that like Roosevelt avoided uh, you know, in the 30s and so forth, and they went through this thing, and they've given all this money, and they've bailed everything out. Do you think they've, uh, they've staved it off? Do you think we're okay? Are we going to, uh, jobs are now 10% and heading more. Some people say it's as high as 20% in real terms. Lord Cain said that they're not going to need workers to do production. It's, there's a trend to where they think the supply of stuff, Televisions, automobiles, all kinds of things and everything are going to be able to create it with an ever smaller ratio of labor. And the only way they distribute po income to the, buy to the people, the masses, is through a job. So you have a job on the estate of which the assets are all owned by a tiny plutocratic class in every entity. And then it's like a serf picking up leaves on the estate of the master. And you get a little money so you can buy food for the kitties and everything. And they're not going to need them to do the work to produce massive amounts, overwhelming amounts of stuff, all kinds of stuff. But you're not going to have a way for the people to have income, money, because they're out of sync with the way things are being produced, which are increasingly, overwhelmingly capital intensive, and the trend is in that direction. And the capital assets are all tiny. They don't have a way of distributing demand. And Kelso, I mean, uh, Keynes said, you're going to be confronted with that in 1930s. So you're going to be confronted, the maturity and their maturity, that generation will be confronted with massive, technologically induced, beyond outsourcing and that kind of look for the race to the bottom use of labor and so forth. But they're going to be with massive, technologically induced unemployment, and they're taking away the means by which they can distribute buying power to the people, which could lead to a massive uh, depression because the people are not going to be able to buy and clear the market of what can be produced. It's out of sync, supply and demand. And so that could lead to a situation where there's going to be all kinds of irrationalities, archaic, anarchistic bombs, all kinds of things that people in great desperation, which would lead to a situation that could unleash the weapons that would destroy the species. We need a new economic system rather than the one that we're muddling through with, or do you think we need decisions at that national, international level in terms of restructuring not only the supply chain of Walmart or the other things and everything like that, but the way in which the whole economic system is, is developed, capital is formed, and demand is distributed in order for us to have a system that's in touch with the future direction of a capital intensive, massive capital intensive, uh, technologically augmented productive system. Well, you know, that's a, uh, 
uh, that's another a systems to, question. That's a big uh, uh, question and big thoughts. But personally, I mm. guess my thoughts, and we touched on this a little bit yes, yeah. yesterday in our well, conversation. I would want to bring it back to but uh, just in essence, mm. uh, a, th a, a thought, because I believe that the planet is mismanaged. Uh, planet Serious, Earth, no. and because it's mismanaged in my mindset, and because oh, almost two billion people don't have food today, and because of some very major concerns of the world, uh, uh, nuclear and uh, chemical and things like this, that we do need some change. No, and, not and, some. Uh, well, okay. we, we, not some change. A lot of change. No, no. no. <laughs> I, I would go. I like I say now. My d lovely director. Josh Malinke was joshing me today about it and everything. But it's not just a paradigm. That would be a paradigm with one division of General Motors. That's a paradigm shift or something. But a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, paradigm. Education has to be qualitatively transformed and liberated. All the financial systems have to be qualitatively changed and beyond what Mr. Bernanke or the other Republicans or the people argue about what we have to do with Keynes or Schumpeter or whatever. All of, it's virtually everything has to be brought up for the idea of interrelated qualitative transformation and we don't see that anywhere in terms of the intellectual presentation of the human condition in our relationship to technology and to the future. I mean, I can't find it anywhere. They're just all muddling through. Well, you know, I, I believe there needs to be a, a massive reconsideration by planet Earth, by the people on the Earth to evaluate, for uh, yeah, for everything. Okay, thank you, that's what I'm saying. For everything. Yeah. A everything and yeah. anything. That's what I'm saying. By yeah. far, because yeah. I, uh, my example was, first, two, two billion people can, can't get a glass of water. It's and, disgusting. And, uh, no, I understand. It's disgusting, or it's a, a woman is waiting for which kid she's gonna let starve to death when we got the ability uh, to give a, overwhelming a planet. food to them. Mismanaged and planet. And we don't, that's right. It's very and mismanaged. We don't, and it's getting worse. And the, 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 the differentiation is getting worse. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. I mean, there's some, we were talking about all these rich people are giving their money away. I don't know why they're doing that now. Gates and what's his name, Hathaway guy and everything like that. And everything, they're all giving their money away now, these billionaires. I don't know why that is or what it means, but maybe it augurs well for things to help uh, charities or nonprofits or something that they're giving their money away. Major portions of their of their of their billions that they are the billionaires of the world. What does that mean to you? What does it, it signal? Well, for, for me, it uh, it signals. Actually, I interviewed Bill Gates' dad one time. Oh, he's beautiful on this, guy. On the this, estate on, tax. On this exact issue. What about the estate um, tax? Yeah. Uh, this was, you know, he felt that it was a responsibility of wealthy people to give away their money. William, he is. Uh, is it William or no? Um, oh, never I mind. So. It, was, it must have been ten years ago. He had nice a guy. And it'd be a very the estate nice gentleman. Tax. They were arguing. About yeah, it was the estate tax yeah, right, right, at, right, at that right. time. Uh -huh. But in addition, he sp he spoke on this, uh, you know, giving, the larger giving issue, away, yeah. the larger issue of giving mm. away money. I mean, mm. it's a beautiful thing if people are able. And my, what do I think? I think it's a great thing. I, mm. I their their reasoning of why or uh, I, I'm not, you know, I, I can't. I got enough to do with what I'm doing Keeping myself. Good, good Keeping good news, good news going. Door. Yeah, I know. You're it's busy. good news. That's people good. are doing it. Yeah. We try not to actually yeah. be judgmental. Good. Okay. And, yeah. No, that's uh, good to encourage Especially that. when yeah. somebody wants to give away a billion dollars or a million dollars to help that to help, kid in Africa. To help that kid in Africa. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What am I going to question? What am I going to yeah, right. question it? It's good. Uh, that's know, good to call it. That's good. You're calling attention to because there's a lot of attention called to the bad. People can get into every aspect of anything. You know. Okay. And question everything, yeah, right. you know, and judge and be a critical, yeah. you know. Uh, and there's plenty of people that will be. Well, that's practically all the news, you know. And but the, it's, the news. it's not my gig. Yeah. I don't uh, judge. I don't judge how you paint. I don't judge how you uh, sing. Uh -huh. I don't try my best to judge at all. It's your show. Uh -huh. Enjoy it as long as you're not you punching anybody in the face. Say that to I, everybody. I want. To, I say it to everybody. Yeah, you're kind of like. I that. want everybody on yeah. the world on good news. I'd like everybody on good news and everybody being able to realize. To what say they what, want to do. It's their show. It's no, not for their me. Sh their life. It's is their, their life. Their, their life is their show. show, and they're not having to dance to the puppet of what and they, they have to do. And they don't got to dance to my uh, yeah. my report. But most I'm not people a have to dance to the puppet master that's manipulating That's, the means by which they have bread on the table. I don't know what they want to dance to. I can't don't even you think figure most it out. People? 
I don't, I don't know. People want to survive, and yeah, what they have, they have to, have do, to do to and survive. The only, and to survive, you need what they call money. And what does it, for the vast majority of people, even though the actual production is increasingly technological instruments, machines. Yeah, you can run the whole world maybe on with robots. I've, I've dealt with it robots. It could go that way, and you also know, the trend I mean, is in certain that Certain things, way. but on the other or hand, there's like that mega trends and stuff like that. Yeah, who Nesbitt's, was that guy? Nesbitt, John Nesbitt. Ne Nesbitt, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, uh, there's unfathomable other things that can be done. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, worldwide, mm. uh, if, the, if things massively take a different route, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. to get more people working, you know, it, it depends on how the world wants to run itself. Well, I would submit, it, and I don't mean to be, we're all right out of time, but I think the one problem at that level of practicality is the, uh, let's say the progressives, I mean, intellectuals, and the, I don't know, there's something on the right, but I can't find many Burke or something, but mostly the intellectuals have been concerned with the least among us, including Jesus and Buddha and everybody said we have to take care of the least among us, ignored by the political leaders for the most part. But anyway, on the left, that they don't have a, a, a critique that is sensible and, and I think what they have to, they've been blinkered by commitment to the labor theory of value, the idea that the human labor which is very important. It gives you a sense of identity. Guy used to go to assembly line and turn nuts for eight hours a day, but he could take home and raise a family and you know, they get identity by that and everything. But the labor theory of value and sing the praises of the worker who does things and there's that gonna be and it's gonna be there. It's gonna have to be there. But the trend is for the big stuff, the automobiles, the trains, the cement, the buildings, everything is more and more capital intensive all the time. And the capital is all owned by a tiny class. And why the left, if that's called the left, or the intellectuals, let's say, think it's perfectly all right for all the capital assets to be owned by a certain group which is responsible for production and they hope that they will do things that will create jobs, but Lord Keynes has said they're going to be undercut. And with, especially with uh, globalization, they can go to other markets and in the private sector, they can be competitive, so they can undercut the input, uh, the need for labor to do production. And so they're stuck with this idea about how wonderful labor is, and that that's the only way to distribute income, it's the only thing you hear people talk about, you have to get a job on the estate of the guy that owns it all. They never talk about everybody should have a piece of ownership of the technology that's creating wealth as a way of distributing income. I think they've been blinkered and they ought to get out of that and come with a critique and raise the system to the degree it's required. Raise it, Will Shakespeare said, raise it on its own petard. It's great for them, it should be great for everybody, and, it just, and form capital in a way where everybody has a capital ownership in the private sector as a way of distributing income so they'd have buying power to buy what can be produced. And they're not doing that, and it's the, le it's the intellectuals on the left that are at fault for falling down on the job. We're out of time. You have uh, to say goodbye. Reminded so. me of George Jefferson moving on up. <laughs> moving on, on up east to side east side. To finally get a piece of the pie. Well, no, it's we, not. Everybody should have a piece of the pie. Everybody should have an ownership. The left should see it that way rather than left, singing right, the praises. Right, anything. Everybody no, should no, just no, have a piece of pie. No, 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 it's different. The right doesn't. The right is fine. I don't know about rights and well, left. Well, the right. Anyway, it's your pleasure. We've run out of time again. Uh, we're coming right up to the end, Paul. Thank you. I'm sorry I got off on all these rants. But I, I think that it's the, the progressive, so-called progressives, have to get out of their swoon to the labor theory of value. It informed Marxism, and it was relevant, but it's not relevant, and it's the thing that keeps them blinkered in terms of an effective way of raising the capitalist system, private property issues that are going to come up now in the new Congress, and that on its own petard. And then it's going to be able, from there, to be able to, and I think maybe Obama's in pretty good shape, in terms of being able to have a situation where they will be raised on their own petard rather than celebrating their victory as they think. But so I may be optimistic, but. I think we should have a group hug. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much. Your pleasure. Paul Slack is one of the best and he's really good. He's Good News Planet coming up now. Happy to review that. Best of the holiday season to one and all. Glad to brought up Paul Ryan and some of the other